to the vlog on a bit of a rainy Wednesday. Is it Wednesday today, Jen? Or a rainy Thursday. And as you can see, we still have a few leaks that find their way into the building. But you know what? I'm not losing any sleep about it. We've got other more pressing matters to be getting on with today. Mainly, of course, which is what you've come for, we're going to be uh, figuring out the dose rate and bottling uh, the plum porter. That's what's going to happen today. So let's get the bottling kit out. Gemma's already cleaned it for us all. Uh, I put wheels on the stainless steel table this morning as well so that's ready to go and we can then start the whole process. So in the true spirit of experimentation, we have worked out exactly what kind of dose we're going to be putting into these porters of this. So this is Uncle Roy's uh, plum porter, plum porter, natural plum essence, excuse me, and uh, to trial it. I haven't written this in order by the way, I just made it up as I went along. We're going to start with, I think, not point, well, we're going to have a control of each beer. So let's bring the beers in so we can have a look. So here they are. These are the two porters in question. The darker one is, of course, the second one that we made. And the lighter one is the one that has real plums in it. So let's have a little taste actually before we go any further. So let's go for the one with real plums in. Wow, that's a very different beer to when me and Froggy tasted it on the previous video. You can taste the plums and it's giving it a sour note. It works though, it really does work. It's balanced, it's not too sour. There's no overpowering bitterness in there. It's a very, very nice, very nice beer, just on its own. So let's also go in with this one. And if you notice on the top, looks like there's a slick, oily residue on the surface. I don't know what that's from. It could be from the glass, I think. Gemma may have used washing up liquid, which I never do on the glasses. Right, let's go in for the porter. Mmm. Nice, malty, there's a hint of roastiness in there. Again, really nice standalone beer. So, what we're going to do with these beers is obviously bottle them, condition them, and carbonate them. And in order to do that, we are going to require some priming sugar. So, if you look down to the bottom of this page here, I've worked out the amount of primary sugar we're going to need per litre, so this will do two bottles, 500ml uh, bottles. So I've used the Brewer's Friend beer calculator. Uh, the app is available from the Play Store or whatever you get your apps from, or you can go directly to the website, brewersfriend.com I think it is. 
So you need to input a few variables and one of them is the beer temperature. Now the reason you put the beer temperature in is because the colder the beer then the more CO2 it will already have absorbed into it or at least other gases. We help CO2 and not oxygen. So the beer temp is sat at 5 degrees C which is nice and I want to achieve 1.9 volumes of CO2 in the finished bottles therefore the calculator says that I need 1.9 grams of dextrose. It says corn sugar on the calculator but it's the same thing pretty much. I use dextrose as opposed to table sugar because it is dextrose and not fructose so it's much easier for the yeast to break down without giving any fruity uh, esters or anything else going on because when it has to metabolize when the yeast has to metabolize fructose it has to split it I believe into glucose and then into smaller chain sugars and it's difficult for the yeast to do that without producing byproducts so dextrose is the way to go for a very clean carbonation and if you want to buy some dextrose in bulk you can order 25 kilogram bags from a sausage making company called Scoobies S-C-O-O-B-I-E-S I think in the UK I'm sure there are other places around the world if you're watching elsewhere so we're gonna go ahead and mix up a solution of uh, 1.9 grams of dextrose with water which will mean I have to do another calculation but generally I'll do it 50-50 by weight so if we put 1.9 grams of water in then I'll put 1.9 grams of dextrose in meaning if I put that whole liquid which will be about 3 milliliters into the beer it's an order of magnitude less than the quantity of beer so it doesn't really affect it too much and that way I can heat up the dextrose in the microwave to boiling point completely dissolving it and at the same time completely sanitizing it so that aside that's the carbonation part of this whole process done next we want to be looking at how much of the essence are we going to be putting into the beer so we're going to start I think at 0.25 millilitres per litre that's not going to stop there is it we're going to start at 0.25 mil per litre and all I'm going to do is pop a bottle onto these scales, these micro scales which measure uh, in 0 0.01 gram graduations and we'll add, we'll weigh out 0.25 millilitres per litre of this into a bottle and then we'll go ahead and fill on top of that. Also we're going to do 0.5 mil, we'll do I think 0.75 mil, I don't think I've written that on there, let's pop it in there now, 0.75 mil per litre and then 1 mil and we're going to go all the way up to 2 mil per litre which I think looking at other people's recommendations and the information out there on the forums is going to be probably too much. Uh, and then we're going to seal up the bottles, we're going to pop them into a warm room and we're going to come back in a couple of weeks hopefully when they're carbonated and we're going to taste them and then we're going to decide which one we're going to move forward with and uh, make a large batch of it. In the meantime however I will be brewing uh, the porter version, not the plum version because I don't have enough plums to do it on the big kit. So however this turns out with the additions of the essence is the one that we're going to be serving on the bar in the brew shed. This one however is just to prove the concept of using real natural plums in a beer. So let's go ahead and weigh out some ingredients and get the bottles prepped for filling. Okay so before we go ahead and dose the bottles with sugar and whatnot, I'm just going to run down this calculation. So what I've decided to do is three bottles of each quantity. So each one of those um, 
is times two, because there's two batches of beer. So that's nine bottles times three times two, which gives us 54 bottles of beer in total. Out of those 54 bottles of beer, there's 27 litres of beer. So for 27 litres of beer, we need 51.3 grams of sugar to prime it to 1.9 volumes. But in order to dose each bottle correctly, it would be nice to have uh, 108 grams of liquid, so we can put two grams of primary sugar liquid solution into each bottle. Therefore, if we use 51.3 grams of sugar, then we need to add 57 grams of water, giving us 108 grams, which leaves us with two grams of priming solution per bottle. That is easy to do. So we'll be adding that to each bottle along with the correct dose from this chart. It's easy if you do it step by step, but it sounds complicated, I know. So let's head over to the bottling station where we have some paracetic acid all geared up and ready. We'll be filling our uh, cleaning squirty bottles with that solution. And then the idea is we take our bottles out of here, like so. We dip the end in the solution to clean it and then we squirt it a couple of three times to rinse it just like so and then hang it to drain then that is ready now to receive the priming sugar and the essence and then the beer and I think with the beer we're just going to be gravity filling out of the spout I might put a little bit of tube on there we shall see but I think we're just going to gravity fill if I did have a single bottle filler I'd use it but I'm afraid I don't have one so uh, I might have to buy one of those little bottling ones I used to have one but I think I've lost it This is a tedious and boring process, which it is. You will note that if we're going to be bottling any quantity of beer uh, at once, then I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't be priming each bottle individually. It's too much of a task. Instead, what we'd do is we'd take the beer out of tanks and we'd fill a cask up with beer, and a cask holds 40 litres. So we'd basically just mix up the required priming solution for 40 litres of beer and then we put that into the cask first before we fill the cask and then when we fill the cask up with the beer the turbulence during the fill is enough to mix it all and then we'll just stick a tap in the end of the cask and we bottle from the cask it's a very convenient way of doing it and I've seen many other breweries doing exactly the same thing it kind of works for us 
but this because it's just a small quantity we can just go ahead and do it all by hand well that was somewhat tedious but we've got all the bottles now primed with the priming sugar and on the front there I've written a little dose guide so I can go along and make sure that I put the right amount of flavour in into each bottle and then we just need to put the beer in and frigging cap them all. So that is all of the porter from both tanks into bottle now. What I've done to be able to recognize them pretty easily is the stuff, the darker porter has got the purple or blue cap on and the porter with the real plums in it has got the red cap on. I've also made some little labels as well which maybe one day the camera will focus for us so you can see it. So we've got a control and they're moving up in 0.25 millilitres per litre uh, increments. We have obviously the essence in both batches. So all that I have to do now is put them into these boxes which conveniently hold 12 bottles and then put them in a warm place, bring them up to ambient temperature of about 20 degrees so they can carbonate over the next week or two and in the meantime we'll still be able to brew the darker of the two porters on the big kit because it was a good beer on its own anyway and then when we open these hopefully that porter will be about ready to save us some time and when we figured out exactly what kind of dose rate is spot on the money then we'll go ahead and we'll dose the whole batch in the tank before we cask so that's the plan uh, instead of setting one of the cold rooms 
and turning it into a warm room. I think we're just going to put all of these boxes in the back of the car, take them home and maybe stick them in the corner of the bedroom for a couple of weeks. That should be warm enough for them to carbonate and of course the house is always a lot warmer than this place. So that's it folks, we're going to wrap it up for this vlog. We've got the beer in bottle and uh, well we've got the bottling kit or the bottling equipment up and running so we can now start to crack on and maybe bottle Vacant Gesture and all the other cracking beers that we do. We'll see you tomorrow.